Am I the asshole for changing my grown son's room into a room for my granddaughter? I have two kids. Kathy, 29F, and Michael, 25M. Kathy lives with me, pays a portion of the bills and has no plans on moving out anytime soon. We have our own business that we operate out of our home. It's easier for her to live here and it's great because I have help with the bills. Whereas, Michael lives about an hour away for work and has his own apartment. For a while, I kept Michael's room as is. He's shared several times he has no plans of moving back home as his job is in the city he moved to. Kathy had a very close friend who has a two-year-old daughter, Zoe. Friend named Kathy her daughter's godmother as well as guardian should she pass. Unfortunately, that happened six months ago. Kathy's friend was a single mom, so Kathy was granted custody. At first, Zoe was sharing a room with Kathy as she had extreme separation anxiety. However, she's now ready for her own room. As our home is a three-bedroom. We don't have anywhere else to put her. When I told Michael what we were doing, I said I'd get a pull-out for the living room or I could get a daybed for my room when he visits overnight for holidays. I know rooming with your mom isn't fun, but I want to give him options. He's mad that I gave the room to Zoe. He says that was his room. I said I understand but he doesn't live with me. Kathy does and pays bills. She's even paying more now because she feels she's using more resources with Zoe living with us. I'd feel different if Kathy and Zoe were moving out soon but they're not. At this point, Kathy plans to adopt Zoe. I want to help her. My mom helped me raise my kids. Her mom helped her. It's in our culture to have a multi-generational household. Moving isn't an option. I can make the space more private for Michael when he spends the night, a divider in the living room. But as he usually only sleeps her two or three times a year, it just doesn't feel practical. I said if Michael ever needed to move home permanently, we'd make something work. And I'd also help him with his child if he was in this situation. He says he doesn't want kids. I said that's fine but this is the situation at this moment. He feels Kathy should move out. I said I'm not kicking her out just so he can have a room the few times he spends the night. Am I the asshole? Not the asshole. You don't need to maintain a shrine to your grown son. Your needs change, and there is a valid reason to change his old room into a room for Zoe. He lives an hour away, so how often does he rely stay there? Not the asshole. Your son feels entitled to a place where he doesn't live. He moved out. He lives elsewhere. He pays taxes elsewhere. He pays rent, mortgage elsewhere. He doesn't live there, he doesn't need a room. That being said, if he sleeps there 2 3 x a year, can't Zoe spend the night in Kathy's room, or Kathy and Zoe's, for those few nights, so that Michael can have a little privacy? Not the asshole. I could see if your son was 18 or 19, in college and planning on coming home for the summers. But at 25 and established in his own home, apartment, he has no need for his childhood bedroom. Sorry, but you don't need your son's permission to make changes in your home. When he comes and visits, he can sleep on the couch or get his own hotel room. You don't need to feel bad at all. Your son is the asshole. Ah, I love that you called her your granddaughter. Not the asshole at all and please don't feel like you are. Let me tell you something. At one point in my life, I was Michael. My mom took in my three cousins when I went away to college. They needed my room to accommodate our growing family. I had my own apartment, and I rarely visited back home because of my studies. Michael is acting really immature. I'm sorry but I as an 18 y o understood that my mom needed the room. Michael as a 25 y o should understand as well, but instead he's being really selfish. Am I the asshole for telling my future in-laws that they need to change our rehearsal dinner location? I, 25F, and my fiancé, 26M, have been together for eight years. My fiancé finally asked me the question in January of last year and we are getting married this September. We have both been very hands-on during the whole wedding planning process. His parents graciously offered to pay for our rehearsal dinner. With this knowledge we asked multiple times what our budget was, and sent a list of places we would like to have it at with prices attached. We heard nothing from them, after multiple lists sent and questions asked. About two weeks ago my fiancé's dad finally called us to talk rehearsal dinner places. Turns out he had already booked something that was nothing like anything we had on our list. 
The place is a bar with multiple one-star reviews for bad food. My fiancé and I have been to this restaurant multiple times with bad experiences. We asked why we were not involved and told them to cancel it. There was no cancellation fee and they would receive their deposit back in full. They said they would think about it and asked for more options. I fell in love with an Italian place halfway between our venue and the hotel people are staying at. They asked for pictures and a menu with no response. I even got to the point of the restaurant writing up a contract for us. Then last night they finally responded with a, no we are sticking to the original place, and, we don't want to start a war. I am beyond frustrated and at this point might book the place we want anyway. Am I the asshole? Not the asshole. Why would your future in-laws want to have the rehearsal dinner at a place with bad food? Surely one-star reviews plus your own bad experiences should be enough to deter them from the place. It's also not just your place to be asking for what you want. Why is your fiancé not more involved in this? It's his parents. While it's generous of them to pay for the dinner, if it's something neither of you want then they should take that into consideration. Why is your fiancé just waiting for them to respond? Can he not pick up the phone and call? Or go visit, presuming they don't leave too far away? Why hasn't your fiancé picked up the phone and discussed with them? Why didn't he call and follow up after you sent them ideas and menus of places you liked? Did he call them directly to discuss? Is it possible fiancé gave his parents the impression it was okay to select the place they prefer? If they decide to push back and insist after having a discussion of your wishes, I would tell them you're paying for the dinner at the restaurant you select. But I am wondering why the Finnis has not stepped up to have a heart-to-heart -heart with the parents yet. He might be the A, ah, as well as his parents. You, op are not the A-H. Not the asshole. Book the reservation you want. We appreciate your generous offer to pay for the rehearsal dinner but not if we don't have a say in the venue. We'll take lead on planning and pay for this ourselves. If you'd like to contribute something to help cover or share the cost that would be welcome but not required. And your finance needs to send this, not you. Not the asshole though it is nice they offered to pay, you should not feel obligated to accept their choices. Pay for the place yourselves, and the problem will be solved. If they love that place so much, perhaps offer them lunch there before the wedding for a close family planning session, and treat them to a one-star dining experience. Your fiancé needs to respond with something like, in that case, we thank you for your offer to host the rehearsal dinner, but we are going to have to decline. We will handle the arrangements and pay for it ourselves. Please understand that this is no way, a war, we simply do not like this restaurant. We have eaten there more than once and have never had a good experience. As such, it is an unacceptable choice for us. ETA forgot to add. Not the asshole no one needs to be subjected to bad food. Not the asshole. I would tell them that since you already have had bad experience and you don't want your guests to have that same bad experience, that you would rather pay for the dinner and go somewhere a bit more reputable. Tell them that you very much appreciate their offer to pay, but you don't want to subject your guests to very poor food and experience, if they, future in-laws, are not willing to compromise. Am I the asshole for replacing my diabetic uncle's shredded cheese that I ate? I, 21F, live with my aunt and uncle until I can get on my feet after graduating college. I've lived with them since high school after both my parents passed away. My uncle is diabetic and needs to measure out his meals. He can't eat many things so he has his own foods that only he eats. Otherwise, my aunt and I share the same food in the fridge and she always gets new things to try. Last night I was making mac and cheese, it was really just random pasta with some different cheeses in the fridge, and grabbed some shredded cheese to use. Halfway through adding it, my aunt says that's my uncle's shredded cheese that he started using for meal prep. I didn't finish the bag but I took enough where it would probably not add up to enough ounces for his meals. About three pinches. We don't have the best relationship. He has anger issues and attributes it to work. I don't have a job and rely on them for groceries, but I do help around the house and babysit my younger niece. I got the idea to replenish the shredded cheese to avoid any arguments about someone touching his food. I searched around in my room for any spare change or dollars I could find and went to the grocery store to buy another bag of cheese. When I got back, he was home and asked where I went. I told him I accidentally used some of his cheese and I bought an extra bag. He then starts yelling at me for eating his cheese, 
that he only has limited things he can eat. Why did I eat the one thing he has to flavor his meals? And that I'm trying to play martyr buying more cheese when I have nothing to spend. I tell him I'm just making up for my mistake and he says to stop playing the hero and that I shouldn't have done anything or told him anything. He says if I could buy my own cheese then I should buy my own food instead of eating theirs. My aunt assured me he didn't mean what he said but that I should have just waited for her to replace the cheese instead of calling attention to yourself. She said I was acting dramatic by spending what I had left on his cheese instead of just admitting to him that I took the cheese first. I don't understand what I did wrong. Not the asshole for replacing the cheese, but you need to find a new living arrangement. It sounds like you may have worn out your welcome with your uncle while your aunt is eager for you to stay. Even if that's not the case and he's always been this irritable, it's not a tenable situation. Hi, 13 years managed diabetic here. You're not the asshole. And there is no such thing as food diabetics, can't eat. There are foods we should label, sometimes food, and cheese is actually one of them. Despite popular belief we can eat sweets and desserts and even bread. We just need to make sure we balance it out with protein and fiber and vitamin rich foods too. In short. Your uncle is full of shit, probably because of the cheese, and needs to lay off the drama. Stressing out is bad for his blood sugar. Cooking tip. Shredded cheese actually isn't the best choice for mac and cheese. Some of the additives give it a waxy-like cover that makes it harder to melt and sticks to the pot. Not the asshole, but do what your aunt says and don't tell him next time. Tell her and she will replace it. Based on this, you can't win with your uncle, no matter what you do. What is this special diabetic cheese, anyway? Is it low fat? Because cheese is already low in carbs. Everyone saying that Op needs another place to live is ignoring the fact that she literally scrounged around for loose change in order to buy a bag of cheese. I highly doubt she has the funds to move to a separate place. Not the asshole. You accidentally used your uncle's cheese. You replaced it after you were made aware of what you had done. Your uncle acted like an A.H. Info. I, 21F, live with my aunt and uncle until I can get on my feet after graduating college. Do they want you there? Who suggested this arrangement? I've lived with them since high school after both my parents passed away. Right, but did they invite you back indefinitely after college? Or did you more assume you could? Am I the asshole for kicking my stepsister out of my birthday trip? I, 19F, and the daughter of separated parents, and my father's new wife has a daughter, Sophie, 18F. Last year my friends and I, including my best friend, May, 20F, Debbie, 20F, and another four girls, decided to go on a trip for to celebrate my birthday. My father called me to ask me to take Sophie with us, because she felt a little left out and I accepted it, even if me and her didn't have a close relationship. The trip was one of the best of my life, but I noticed that May was a little down. I asked what was wrong and she said she was fine, just a little tired, so I believed her. When we returned home, we promised that the following year we would repeat the trip if possible. But this year, when I started preparing everything, Debbie came to talk to me and showed me prints from a group chat that I was not part, which had the exact date of the time we were on the trip, last year, where Sophie was talking bad about May and calling her names, like, whale, fat bit, and other cruel things. For context, May is a fat woman. I spoke to May and she confirmed that during the trip, Sophie was completely unpleasant to her, always commenting on her body and her personality, for no apparent reason. But she didn't say anything, so as not to ruin the vibe of the trip party, and to not create tension between me and my father's side of the family, and after the trip, she ended up forgetting about completely. I went to my father's house, and told Sophie that I knew everything, and she turned pale when she saw the prints I had. I basically kicked her out of the trip and told her I didn't want to see her again. Now, the other girls in the group, apart from Debbie and May, are saying that I was an asshole for kicking Sophie out for something so insignificant, and that if Sophie doesn't go, neither will they. Am I an asshole for kicking her out? Not the asshole. Go with May and Debbie and have a great time. Leave the mean girls behind now they've shown their true colors. Not the asshole it's not insignificant and the girls who think like that good riddance I think. You're now seeing people's values and you get to decide if that's what you want around you. Op, for the record, May is a keeper and a true friend. 
She put up with a lot from Sophie so as not to ruin your trip. She is not a drama queen and neither is Debbie. These are friends you can trust and depend on. Sophie sounds like someone who puts others down so she can feel superior. It is a low self-esteem thing. Kinda sad if you think about it. You could almost feel sorry for her if she wasn't being so hurtful. Not the asshole. Go with May and Debbie and let those girls take Sophie on a trip if they like her so much. They're not the kind of friends the three of you need. Not the asshole. Good on you for taking a stand for May. Sophie and the other Oz who disinvited themselves can kick rocks. Not the asshole and if your friends back out to support treating others like that, you don't want them as friends. That's disgusting, childish behavior and if Sophie can't treat people decently, she can spend her time with people who don't mind being called names.